Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. After our two-week hiatus, I believe it is at this point, it's been we a while. finally, yeah, you guys were waiting. You were like, when's that everything everywhere all, all at once episode going to show up? <laughs> here it's it finally is. here. <laughs> We've got Honestly, all the important characters online for today's episode. We're m- missing absolutely no one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is this how you guys talk about me when I'm not here? I feel like this is how you talk about me when I'm not here. Uh, no. Zach and I just had a deep conversation last time about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I believe that's what we watched, right? Yeah. No. We w- what did we do? Or, I think yes. it was that one. It was that one. I was uh, gone. Oh, okay. I was on a on a trade show trip. I was also trip. gone, but I don't remember why. Uh, Twitch, I was telling people that I was there working with about the podcast, and we gained at least one listener, so shout out nice. to Matt. Thanks. Hi. Thanks for listening. Hi, hi Matt. Hello. Welcome. This week, we're doing everything everywhere all at once, the 2022 uh, action-adventure comedy by the Daniels. I'm Dylan. Joining me, as always, are Ben and Cam. Hi. <laughs> and to kick things off and get everybody in the right mood, we're going to go to this week's cocktail, courtesy of uh, Ben. A nice idea here. Uh, why not do, for everything, everywhere, all at once, every cocktail? All at once, or every alcohol all at once. Uh, the Long Island Ice. Oh tea. my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, genius! You know, that's fair. That's yeah. Wow. If you haven't had a Long Island, you should try it. Um, it's a, kind of like a rite of passage, I would say. It's what a twenty-one-year-old orders when they go to the bar for the first time. Or my you know, uncle, like... who's fifty now at this point. I feel like <laughs> it's one of those things that. If you don't know what you're drinking, you can order it without really hesitating, and it makes you sound like you've been drinking, but at the same time, everyone that hears you order it immediately knows that you don't drink. I will say, though, if you're going to a place that the drinks are pretty, like, bad, you know, like, they don't make very good drinks, I think a Long Island is a safe one to get, because it's just an amalgamation of, I mean, as the name, as we just said, everything, so it's kind of hard to mess it up too bad. And it's pretty effective. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely set a limit uh, going in. Depending on like the size you go for. Usually a couple. Usually uh, get you feeling some type of way. To make one, it is three quarters of an ounce of vodka, white rum, silver tequila, gin, triple sec, simple syrup, lemon juice, and then you top it with cola if you're feeling a little fancy, you can garnish it with a lemon wedge. A Long Island is it's it's a classic. Somehow, all of that alcohol doesn't taste really like alcohol. Uh, kind of gets lost in the sauce. It's like witchcraft. Let's be honest. It is kind of weird <laughs> that you think of like a Long Island. Everyone's you know the Long Island iced tea. There's no iced tea in it, and it's just a bunch of random alcohol thrown into a glass. And it's like and a huh. splash of Coke. Huh. <laughs> this tastes like iced tea. It's uh definitely a classic cocktail, I would say. Um and if you're feeling a little adventurous, check out the Drizzling Casker links below to get a million bottles of alcohol delivered directly to your door. We get a little kickback from that, and you would get a shit ton of alcohol. You know? What's what's to hate? And check out everything everywhere all at once. It's not available anywhere right now, so I think you're going to have to go rent it. I'm sure it'll be on either Amazon or Hulu shortly, because A24 usually goes pretty quickly uh, to those two services. And uh, yeah, we're going to spoil pretty much all of it, so get ready. Everything everywhere all at once. Great title. One of those long ones. It's kind of like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I'm going to get tired of saying it all. Uh is a 2002 action-adventure comedy film by Dan Kwan and Daniel Sh- Scheinert, uh, also known as Daniels. I believe they did Swiss Army Man, and I don't know if they've done another movie, but I know they did the Turn Down for What music video. It was like their first big thing they did. Written by Daniels, stars Michelle Yeoh, uh, Kehu Kwan, Stephanie Su, James Hong, Jamie Lee Curtis is in there, Jenny Slate, 
Biff Whiff from I Think You Should Leave. He plays the, <laughs> yes. the Santa. I noticed. I was like, uh, the sec. Well, I noticed it when I watched it in theater, but I watched. I when I was watching this time, I was like, oh, I forgot Santa Claus is in this movie. He plays Santa Claus, and I think you should leave when Santa tries to do like badass action movie roles. <laughs> Randy Newman voiced Rakakuni. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> Which what a just what a just crazy bit they leaned into there. That was like, oh yeah, haha, no, that's not Ratatouille. It's or it's not Rakakuni, it's Ratatouille. And then just went really hard leaning into that bit and like <laughs> brought it to life actually. Everything everywhere all at once is the story of an aging Chinese immigrant who's swept up by a uh, swept up in an insane adventure where she alone can save the world by exploring other universes, connecting with the lives she could have led. Uh, some call it the ultimate multiverse movie. Currently sits at an 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb. It's the number 145 top rated movie uh, on IMDb's top 250. Uh, Cam, I think, is the only one who had seen this film before. That's right, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I, I just didn't make it to the theaters. Everyone was like, Dylan, you got to see this movie. You would love it. They weren't wrong. It was kind of batshit insane for for most of the movie. I was like, where where's this going to go next? <laughs> ben, what did you think uh, on your first viewing? I honest, so I, I knew this movie came out. I knew it was something about multi dimensions, but I I really did not know what I was walking into when when the movie started and it started. And I'm like, okay, what? Everyone talked this up. I'm so confused. This just seems this lady's just you know kind of whatever going about her day running a laundromat, and then shit starts to happen. You're like, oh, okay. I didn't realize it was like a. I I didn't expect like a 90s style early 2000s style like kung fu movie um that was not something i was ready for but i i loved it uh yeah this was a movie that i'm surprised i didn't pay more attention to when it was coming out i think just probably due to the fact that uh so many other things were going on earlier this spring slash summer that i have not paid attention to what movies have been coming out um yeah i mean this also came out with like i think the batman came out right around this time mm -hmm. um and the spider-man movie i think came out just before or after so yeah. it was like there was a ton of blockbusters there were that this like kind of snaked in between but it was still like it still did really well i think it did it's well still in theaters it is. It is. I went to look it up to find like where to watch it, and what came up was a bunch of movie theaters around me. I'm like, okay, yeah. uh, all right. How do I streaming? Where do I stream this? Because I'm not going to a theater. Yeah, I want to know how uh, how well it did. Like, I'm sure we could look it up, but I want to know how well it did between weekends. Because I feel like this is a movie where. It did fairly well the first weekend, and then a bunch of people saw it and were like, holy shit, you gotta go watch this movie. And then it did really well, like, the second weekend, and then thereafter. Like, word of mouth type of thing, you know? Um, well, A24 likes to do, sometimes they'll do, like, the limited release. So mm -hmm. according to IMDb, the opening weekend, it made half a million dollars. Oh, but and that's like... So far, worldwide, it's grossed $92 million. Okay. I was gonna say I know they do a lot of like limited one or two theaters in an area might have it and then a couple weeks later it do goes like a full so I'm curious to know if that half a million is like opening weekend for them in terms of like it's opening weekend but it's only opened like halfway so it opened March 25th apparently uh, and it made two hundred thousand dollars the first day, and then by the following week, it had made uh, it was making three hundred thousand dollars a day. By the following week, so two weeks after it released, it was making two million dollars a day on the weekends. <laughs> uh, so it was like progressively 
uh, growing. It looks yeah. like. And now, it, you know, it, you know, it's starting to die down a little bit, but it seems like... I will say I got on to uh, IMDb just to look at the casting in that, because I didn't recognize, you know, I recognized Michelle Yao. I recognized um, James Hong. Obviously, he's been in a ton of stuff. Um, still one of my favorite, like, cheesy action movies of uh, Big Trouble in Little China. So every time I see him, I kind of, that's what I think of. But I, I couldn't place the the main, like, the dad, the husband. Yeah. I couldn't figure it out, and I was talking to Dylan, and I went, oh, my God. I pulled up my new and I'm like, it's Short Round from Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. How did yeah. I not? He was also, I think, Data in the Goonies. That was his yeah, name. Yeah, I was, I had watched an interview with him at some point for this movie. And, you know, like, he, that was, Indiana Jones was his last feature role before this right and obviously that at, was a long time yeah ago. i looked at imdb and i saw that he really yeah. kind of did like a couple things in the 90s and then he was in like one last thing in 2000 like one and then he hadn't been in anything since until like 2021 yeah well apparently part of it was due to like the lack of like meaningful roles for asian men in film well and so there yeah. were just no roles that he wanted to take and then it kind of like snowballed where he didn't want to take any roles because there weren't any like stereotypical like non-stereotypical roles for him to take and then you know he didn't get work from there so like it yeah and it was really cool to just like i don't know like i heard him you know say that those things and like he's like my, probably my favorite character in this movie honestly like yeah. personally yeah uh, no i thought he was just like so interesting in in the kind of i think of him in terms of like three right there were like three typical there were versions, three of him you know yeah. the the standard that you meet at the beginning of the movie kind of the super spy version and then the businessman version yeah and i thought he just did such a good job and he made you i think of all the characters i feel like he made me like feel the most yes of being like D- yeah damn like a knife to the heart when he's like i i think maybe I think you were right when you said um, we would have been happier if we didn't get married. And she's like, I never said that. He's like, your face did. It was like, oh, ow, my heart. Well, that's the thing is like so much of this movie is this like kung fu, like Scott Pilgrim Matrix esque Mm -hmm. inspired, like shoot him up, like fighty kung fu flicks. But uh, there's still so much like heart in the yeah. movie. Like I was not expecting the end where it's like turns into kind of like a romance, like drama movie for like the last kind of thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if romance. I mean, I I felt more like a family would, drama. I I was gonna say I think I think at its core this movie is actually a yeah a family drama, but specifically an immigrant family drama. Like one that centers around an a an immigrant family into the U.S. who has expectations on them, who you know they put expectations onto their daughter, and then their daughter basically lashes out, and um, you know, and every and it kind of gets resolved uh, near the end. But it, I don't know. The thing I love about this movie is it has all that, and it tells it in such a great way. But then on top of all that, you're like feeling all these things through like googly eyes and and fight scenes and like dildos being smacked around and like all these things where it's like it's funny and it's silly but it's also like very intense and action-packed and it's also very like sad and then heartwarming you know and it it manages to do all of those things very well all at once (laughs) yes (laughs) all of those things everywhere all at once yeah, I mean, had either of you guys seen uh, Swiss Army Man? No. I I haven't. It's one of those things that like I keep seeing it, and I'm like, I need to sit down and watch this. But of course you do. It's got Paul Dano in it. Ben. It's got Paul Dano. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, but I will also say I I know this is going to be blasphemous. I wasn't a big Harry Potter person. Like that just wasn't it wasn't my scene. Um, but Daniel Radcliffe is fucking hilarious so i love when he does comedy stuff like he he's such a good 
like comedic actor that unfortunately it kind of gets overshadowed because you know he was harry potter but i just think his comedic acting is really good and i want to watch it because i i think he's funny and i think those two together would be hilarious but it's just one of those things of finding more than like 30 to 40 minutes at a time to watch something gets tricky well it definitely uh it definitely feels like this movie quite a bit um i mean the plot of swiss army man is like paul dano's on a a deserted island and a body washes up and daniel radcliffe is a swiss army man so he can like use him to do all these different tasks on the island and it's just as absurd i mean (laughs) as you can probably imagine uh using somebody to be a a tool is uh gets a little uh, wild i would imagine so <laughs> and this movie definitely kind of like gets those similar elements same with like the the turn down for what music video and the things that made daniels famous uh you get all of those elements in this movie but you also get a lot of heart and I and I think that's what makes the movie so good is like, oh, you know, you could make an absurdist like comedy film. And I think the multiverse element adds a lot. But I think where it really hits home is like all of these like human nature things of like the aging grandfather and you. Oh, he's like from the old world. So you don't want to tell him that our daughter has a girlfriend, uh, you know. Oh, well, our marriage is starting to like fall apart and when do I like, like, I, I want to talk to you cause I want to serve you these papers. Uh, you know, and he can't like, uh, James, Oh shit. What's his name? Uh, Way- Wayman. Yeah. Uh, can't get a second with his wife to like give her these papers. And then she ends up finding out like just out of the blue, you know, it's, uh, well, and like, he doesn't even human elements. Yeah. And like, it's, and it's even more like, heartbreaking than that because it's like he doesn't want to divorce her but he is basically like at one point he basically explains like i i i did this because it might force us to talk about our issues and resolve them like he doesn't want to get divorced he wants to resolve his issues with his wife but he can't as you said can't find a time to talk to her and she has this opinion of him that he's kind of like oafish and doesn't really know what to do any of the time all the while though like he's you know with the tax stuff he's making stuff happen like he's buying them time and and like actually doing things his way but she just doesn't really get it yeah because he's i think he says something along the lines of like his one of his friends or somebody he knows someone at church yeah they like they were gonna have a divorce or like had the papers and then were able to like discuss it yeah like I said, he he was my favorite character, but I think Jamie Lee Curtis should get some real props for this movie because oh she was great. She was like played the part very well and was just so stupid silly with like a serious face all the time. It was awesome. I I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She's she's like such a good actress. Yeah, even with the um, friggin' hot dog hand scenes where she would, like, okay. play the hot dog. Like, play... They they were, like, you know, obviously, like, in a relationship or married or something. And she would, like, play all these ridiculous things. Uh, or she would play it very seriously even though she had hot dog fingers on, you know? I just give her credit because it was one of those things where it wasn't, like, instantly recognizable that that's... You know what I mean? Like, a, a lot of the times when you get a pretty big name actor or actress to play a part like that the entire time you see them you're constantly like oh it's jamie lee curtis Mm -hmm. i didn't watch the movie at at almost no point was i there was points where i had to like remind myself and be like oh shit that it that's jamie lee curtis like Mm -hmm. when when you get lost in something like that for such a you know a big name that that's always impressive to me like yeah with the hot dog fingers where they're like she's like oh play me something and then she starts playing the piano with her feet, <laughs> with her feet. Just like oh my god Cameron did the movie I guess did it lose anything on a rewatch cuz I feel like sometimes like crazy movies or like ones that are kind of like 
wild will kind of lose some of that like spark when you go to um, watch it again did it no i don't think so so like obviously you know where it, one of the, the cool thing about watching for the first time is you're like where is this going uh but the second time i think i think you just appreciate the ride and again that's the other thing is some of these movies if they do this right like are based on just pure randomness and that's kind of the shtick and once you watch it once and you know what happens you're kind of like okay whatever but this movie has so much more in it just besides the randomness and what is happening from next you know scene to scene um you know like i mean i like like the the second and third acts of the movie are still like you know so uh, you know still hit hard you know emotionally um because that's real, where you really get into the meat of the family dynamics aspect of it, I think. Um, and, you know, the part where she then also connects uh, her her trauma or her her daughter's trauma with her to her trauma with her dad. You know, and it's like, I'm not going to let her go. Why, why was it so easy for you to let me go? You know, like those types of things still had a lot of impact and i think that's what makes this film um continue to have or continue to be um entertaining and meaningful beyond the first watch is it is more than just the randomness between scenes speaking of which though did you guys like the fake out the end where she died like in the middle of the movie oh yeah and it started to roll credits yeah (laughs) yeah Like, she died in the fight or whatever, and then it said the end and rolled credits. And then it went to uh, her, like, in a different universe. Yeah, it was it was a little hard to understand there at that <laughs> part. Because you're like, you're like, wait, she's going to die in this world? And do we find another one? Or, but it was like, she was already in a different world at that point. Well, she had, right, she had become... Because the whole premise that before that was like, I need to become like my daughter so I can beat her. And so she basically does. She basically has her consciousness spread across all universes at once. Effectively. Linking all of them together. Which is a wild concept, but... I feel like the other thing is that never in the movie does it seem like it takes itself too seriously though or like yeah, it's not no. above it's not above like a stupid joke oh i mean the first when when she gestures over to her trophies and is like if you don't get these without seeing some shit and then later it's all, they all it's look, all look like look and butt they're all butt plugs yes. yeah and then later they're trying to figure out random stuff to do and they both look at the butt plug on the table and then the guy pulls down his pants and he's she's just like moving around this trophy <laughs> To avoid him sitting on it. And then the fucking security guard just yes. flies in. <laughs> He's so funny in this. Some of his scenes really crack me up. <laughs> yeah, the one I was thinking of is like uh, when she's like, let me show you. And they do the little thing. Yeah. They like lock their hands and <laughs> yeah. like open it up and it looks like a vagina. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> or uh, I think it's just before that where the daughter, like the guy like tries to attack her and she like turns the nightsticks into like dildos yes, and starts yeah. beating the guy to death you're like what the fuck yeah it's cool it's not it's definitely not above that kind of humor but it does it like i said semi like toilet humor <laughs> it's definitely semi well to downright toilet humor i was but... to say i think the person wielding two dildos as weapons <laughs> is downright toilet humor <laughs> this is really saints row humor uh, if you ever played that game, <laughs> but uh, it's very similar to that where you can like beat someone to death with a giant dildo, you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's so many moments. It might be hard, but were there memorable moments or scenes or like lines that really stood out to you within the film? I give them credit for making it something where you stayed paying attention and your eyes stuck to the screen so well when it was two fucking non-moving rocks. Oh yeah, yeah that 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 scene like to was draw, very, was awesome to draw you in enough to just be standing there basically looking at a landscape painting with with 
captions kind of coming up slowly, I give them credit because that's tough to pull off. But they they had you so invested in what was going on. Um, and it was so outlandish that you were like, okay, something's bound to happen here. But it just, it it didn't. It was just rocks. I don't know. Yeah, no, that was good. Um, I don't know. I'm always just so drawn to the to the parts um, closer to the end where it's getting more towards like the point and resolution. Uh, like in the one universe where they're not married and she's like a successful movie star and he's like a CEO or something. He says to her, uh, so even though you have broken my heart yet again, I wanted to say in another life, I would have really liked just doing laundry and taxes with you. <laughs> Which, like, is kind of funny, but it's also, like, a poignant point, I think, where it's, like, you know, I think people dream often of, like, doing movies, like, being a movie star or whatever and doing all these things. And they're, like, oh, if I didn't, you know, do this other thing and I might have, you know, been wildly successful or whatever. But, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And, you know, a lot of times those personal connections are more important than material wealth that's like like, uh, those types of aspirations when i when i had told hannah about this movie i was like oh yeah no it's like a lady who gets to sort of live or like experience all these other versions of herself and like see the divergent paths in her life hannah was like that's kind of depressing to think about and i was like but it's not it's not like about that though the point of the movie is not to be depressing (laughs) yeah um I think, I mean, that's kind of like uh, the daughter's, the daughter's like kind of take on it is kind of depressing. It's like, yeah, there's so many different possibilities everywhere and you're just a little speck. Nothing matters. But then the flip side of that, which I think is like what ultimately wins out is like, that's true. But also like, you know, some things do matter and that's what you have to cherish. Uh, I do like, though, uh, as a kind of a footnote to that, um, when they're kind of explaining, like, why her, why specifically her, you know, and he's like, you are bad at everything. (laughs) All of your paths have led you to be bad at everything. So you're so therefore you're you have a lot of paths that are close to in proximity to really good versions, good, you know, skillful versions of yourself just funny that was that was so funny i was yeah i was was like i was like damn they're they're really just roasting her right now (laughs) because it's kind of like it's just it's a funny part of the movie because it's like oh like you're the chosen one you're you're gonna be great and then it's like well we chose you because you're You're so good because you're bad at literally everything and you've made all of the worst decisions possible you're so mid you've wa- you've wrapped it back around to being the yeah. one. Uh some of the other things are like callbacks. Like in the beginning they have like a bu- they have like googly eyes on some of the stuff in the laundromat and then later that becomes a big thing. And googly eyes is kind of like the opposite of the bagel, you know? Like you have yeah. like bagel black white on the inside, the eyes are white outside, black inside. Or like when she oh, mixes I didn't up even think about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other thing is the, it's such a hilarious scene when she mixes up Ratatouille with Rakakuni. And then later there's a universe where there is a Rakakuni and, uh, you know, she like exposed it or whatever. But, um, you know, some of those parts are funny to see. When she does that, when she like cracks the egg on the lady's face and then it, (laughs) well, I'll have to give more of your... I'll have to give more of your shits to Chad. And you see Chad's just doing all this stuff. <laughs> There's a giant raccoon tail poking on the back of his ass. <laughs> it's just like, jeez, how has no one noticed this? And then and That's... then he she like walks in to her yeah. like, on it and he's like goes to like try and kill her or something. And then <laughs> yeah. the he's like, she's gonna expose like, us. I told you kill she her. couldn't be trusted. <laughs> Rakakuni, no, well, then, I'm then, sorry, like, I let you down. Trying... 
they're like trying to like chase down the the like animal control place and she's like on his head pulling his <laughs> yeah. hair and then he like he can't make it so she's like no get on my shoulders <laughs> it's like sprints and turbo mode and it's so f- ridiculous but it doesn't feel the funny thing is it doesn't feel as ridiculous while you're watching the movie <laughs> Like, if you describe any of these scenes to anyone who hasn't seen the movie, I feel like it just, it sounds like the dumbest thing in the world. And, you know, I, it, like, maybe it is. But, like, it doesn't feel like that when you're watching it, at least to me. Yeah, it's it's kind of just, like, a piece of it. Yeah. It, it, in a sense. Like, uh, I mean, hell, like we were talking about. At one point, somebody just jumps on a, a butt plug-shaped auditor of the year award or whatever. Like, it just kind of feels like it's a part of the movie in that sense yeah Uh, like you're never like oh yeah you know that's a bit too crazy i i do i never thought about the uh like what you were saying the googly eyes cam like how it's the opposite um i just always kind of took it like with the on the nose bit where like waymond is like you know uh, he says, you think because I'm kind, that means I'm naive, and maybe I am, but it's strategic and necessary, and this is just how I fight. Like, he's optimistic about things, and that's kind of, um, Evelyn, like, accepts that and, like, starts to use that as her weapon later on, yeah. where she's, like, doing the fight on the stairs to go try and save um, her daughter, and uh, it's <laughs> it's just being, like, super nice and, like, <laughs> kind to everyone. Yeah. I would say another weird like cameo type that I didn't Jenny Slate being in the movie for like all of just like kind of a couple minutes. Yeah. But yeah. even in the beginning they play it off like she's kind of important like oh oh I, I gotta stop her and talk to her and they're like you know inviting her to the party and that and then she's just she plays no importance again. <laughs> <laughs> Like she she fights with her dog for like she does seconds. fight with the dog for a couple seconds yeah, which uh, very interesting <laughs> very interesting part of the movie where she's just flinging around the dog <laughs> like a nunchuck because <laughs> <laughs> then she's also like she's like defensive of the dog because like Evelyn like cuts the dog off and it flies away and she gets pissed but at the same time she's like sorry dog and like kicking it around <laughs> and like flinging it i'm like what the hell you're giving me mixed signals oh dylan the uh you sent this message before i'd really gotten into the movie because we we postponed a bit when you said the paper cut cut scene scene, and i was like oh "Oh, god i don't want to have to watch this (laughs) and then i was like when is this gonna happen and then it started to happen and i went oh i just where he's intentionally trying to give himself god and he can't do it he can't yeah. do it, and I'm like, oh, just stop. Just stop trying. Kill me. Just kill me. I don't care. I don't need to jump. Just just end it. Oh, and then he has to do, like, four of them. Oh, God. Why? Like, post, post-watching post the movie, I was kind of thinking about it, and I was like, violence in movies doesn't really affect me. Like, stabbed, shot, whatever. I'm like, oh, you know, like, that's, you know, it's the movie. But for some reason, and maybe it's because I know what the pain is like, the paper cut scene was like just so I cringed and could not actually watch it. I had to, that was the one I had to like put my eyes up and like. Yeah, uh, there's definitely some where it's like, okay, yeah, oh, he got he got shot in the arm. Like, okay, maybe it's just because it's never happened to me that I'm just like, oh, yeah, oh, like God. maybe if you're like, maybe if you've been <laughs> shot, you're like, oh, I don't want to watch any more sh- watch any shooting scenes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, that paper cut thing was just like, oh my God, I, I couldn't, I don't, I couldn't do it. Like Hannah wasn't even, she wasn't watching it with me. She like had headphones on and was watching something else, but like glanced up at the TV. Cause I was like, and, and she's like <laughs> what the hell fast forward <laughs> through this? What are you doing? <laughs> it, it It is a weird like disassociation. Cause it's like, Anything else, I would have just been like, oh, yeah, whatever. But because it's something I know the pain of, I feel like, yeah. is why it makes me physically cringe so much. I just think not just, like, I mean, even it's, like, the, like, if you if you ever watch, like, a old, like, Vietnam-type movie, and it's, like, the torture, like, the bamboo in the fingernails and that, 
It's like, you know that feeling of, like, something getting into your fingernail? Oh, my God. Yeah. Just oh, makes my spine shiver, and I, I don't want to think about it. I think Cam's, I think Cam's got some trivia. I do have some. We're going to see how it goes. All right. Hit us. Okay. So, welcome to my guest trivia section. Hopefully it doesn't suck. All right. So, the first question, uh, this is a multiple choice, multiple select, so we'll play it this way. You can select as many answers as you'd like, but if you get one of them wrong, you don't get any points, but you get a point for each correct answer. I won't tell you how many correct answers there are. All right. So, uh, we talked about how acclaimed this movie was, um, this movie... Holds or held the number one spot on Letterboxd Top 50, Top 250 feature films. Um, which of these movies have also held that top spot prior to this movie releasing? And again, so you can select as many as you want, but if you get one wrong, you get no points. So the movies are Parasite, The Dark Knight, The Godfather. And the Shawshank Redemption. Ben, I will let you go first, because I am at least sure of one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one that I can think of, and it would be, like, Parasite, because it's one that actually came out in recent times that, like, people would have seen and flooded reviews for. I feel like these other ones, like... I just don't know, man. I'm going to say Parasite, and that's, that's going to be the one. I'm going to just risk the one point. Okay. It, so enough. Parasite is definitely it. It was, like, the most reviewed one for a long time on Letterboxd. The issue that I have with the other ones is, like, Shawshank's number one on IMDb, but I feel like it's, like you said, it's not recent enough to be on that list like i feel like people probably put it on their letterbox list but i don't think it's like people are like rushing to put it on there and it's like flooded um i will risk it for the biscuit and i will add the dark knight i feel like that is a heavily beloved movie it's fairly recent and people uh, feel pretty strongly about that one all right so, you guys are both right on Parasite, but Dark Knight is not the answer, unfortunately. Damn. So, I assume how it went is there was a movie that a bunch of people really liked and rated very high, and then Parasite came out, that took the top spot from it, and then and then it was this movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once. So, there have only been three, and the other movie was actually The Godfather, surprisingly. Wow. Okay. So, as you, saw, as you noted, Shawshank is number one on IMDb. Uh, but Godfather's like three, I think, two or three on top IMDb top two fifty. I think Godfather and the Dark Knight's up there too. I think Godfather's three and Godfather two is like four, or maybe they're yeah. switched. And I, and I think Dark Knight might be two even. So yeah, it makes sense. I picked I picked uh, other answers that were near the top. But uh, so Ben, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you're you're right. It's uh, Shawshank, Godfather, Dark Knight, Godfather Part Two. Okay. So, uh, so Ben gets a point. It was a good try, Dylan. It was a, it was a valiant effort, but unfortunately not. No, I be. believe me, I get it. The the people <laughs> who love the Dark Knight fucking love the Dark Knight are and, vocal, yeah. and they are yes, they are a vocal group. It is also higher rated right now, I think, on Letterbox than the Batman from last year or from earlier this year. It's because I which... guarantee you, there are Nolan fanboys who don't care how good the Batman was; they won't. They'll sit there Which and be like, I, oh, 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 it's not as good as The Dark Knight. I have to make sure I rate it lower. <laughs> I, yeah. Dylan? I, mean, I think The Dark Knight. I think... What does that look for, <laughs> Dylan? <laughs> uh, you know, you're just probably triggering a bunch of people. <laughs> Dylan is not a Nolan stan. He is not. I he is not, the opposite. I am the, whatever the opposite yeah. of that is, that is me. I like I, a lot of I Nolan think he's movies. Good. But, yeah. He's good. I don't think he's, like, the greatest of all time, like some people think. I mean, if he is making a movie, like, I'll be more apt to, like, watch it because I know he's, like, I know he made it, but 
Like, I'm not like everything he makes is amazing. I mean, a lot of the stuff he makes is really fucking good, but. But I think I do think the Batman was a better Batman movie, at least. Um, all right. So we're we're at Ben with a point. All right. Next question. So uh, if you guys recall very early in the movie, uh, she is propelled into the janitor's closet, you know, from her like seat. So there's a sign on the janitor's closet. Uh, what does the sign read on it? Does it read A, 401k, B, 1099, C, 1040, or D, W2? Is one of these four. <laughs> All right, read the, read the four options again. All right, 401k, 1099, 1040, or W2. These are also, of course, all common tax, you know, signifiers and forms. I was going to say, I feel like it's, hopefully it's not 401k because the other three are tax forms. <laughs> um, I'm going to go on 1040 just purely based off of, like, <laughs> it's the number one tax form. All right. So I was between two. Um, Dylan guessed the one, so I'm going to say fuck it and go with 1099. Uh, well, the answer is 1099, so Ben takes it. Whew! Uh, what the fuck? You... <laughs> Get wrecked, Dylan. Get fucking wrecked. <laughs> ah! <laughs> How All right. could I know? All right, so even though Ben has won, uh, I'm going to read the last question because I think it's funny. So uh, they had a working title for the movie um, to not spoil things, I guess, in production. Uh, and what was that title? What was the working title for that? A, a divorce story. B, a couple commits tax fraud. C, a woman tries to do her taxes. Or D, a man gets a plug. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say a couple commits tax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with multiverse of madness. <laughs> um, you know what? No, just because I want it to be the answer. I'm going to say it's a man gets a plug. <laughs> uh, no. So both of you are wrong. The alternate oh. title was a woman tries to do her taxes. <laughs> But I was proud of a couple commits tax fraud. I liked that one as a <laughs> um, thing. Uh, that one seems very, uh, it seems a little on the nose, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, congrats, Ben. You won this week's trivia. I hate you. I shouldn't have risked it for the biscuit. You shouldn't have. It was, you know, I, I you didn't win. <laughs> to be fair, you wouldn't have won anyway. Oh, I guess you would have. You might have tied. He would have tied if he got two points on the first one. That's true. You would have tied if he got the yeah. two points on the first one. Too bad you. But suck, if you bro. didn't, but if you didn't risk it, you wouldn't have won anyway. So, if it's In any hindsight, consolation, sure. And I, ad <laughs> I admire your, I admire your boldness to go for it. So. If that means anything. It, it doesn't get you away. My, my logic was sound in my own mind. <laughs> I mean, it was. It just wasn't the right one. <laughs> and no one else's <laughs> mind was it sound but mine. No, it was, it was sound logic. I mean, it just wasn't the right. It just wasn't right. Damn recency bias. <laughs> Why weren't you true? <laughs> I was surprised when I saw that, too. I was surprised that... Because, like I said, I imagine it was like, you know, a bunch of people got onto the app and rated a bunch of movies, and they were like, yes, Godfather is the best. I feel like that's another movie where, like, some people have it in their minds before they've ever even seen the movie that that movie's the best movie. So no matter what, like, they, they're they watching it thinking that, so then they're automatically going to review it that it's super good. Well, Cam is the only one who had seen this film. So he's not going first. Uh, ben and I will give you fresh ratings, and then Cam will give you an updated and a nostalgia rating from like two months ago. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's not much update. This feels weird. I've never, I've never been first before. <laughs> normally, I'm normally I'm the last. Um, 
So like I said, I, I, I didn't really know much about this. I knew it had come out. I knew that it was kind of like this indie type movie. And I knew it had to do with like this whole multiversal kind of thing. Other than that, I, I knew like nothing. I didn't know it was like an action comedy. I, I didn't have any idea what I was walking into when I, when I started this movie. Um, other than I think Zach saying it's the best thing he's seen this. It's the best movie he's seen. Maybe period. Did he say, or was it just this year? Like it's the best movie that's come out this year, but I, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, this movie was fun. It was exciting it made you think. It made you feel. It did a lot of things in a two-hour and 20-minute window. I I very much enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, not knowing what I was walking into, it was very good. I kind of wish I would have seen it in theaters. I feel like it, it would have been kind of better than on my basement television. But I gave it uh, an eight and a half. I was between an eight and a nine. So we're just going to split the difference eight and a half. It's very good. I, I hope it hits streaming services relatively soon so that I can tell people I know to watch it. Although realistically it, it was worth the rent on Amazon. Don't worry guys. I didn't pirate this movie. I know. <laughs> I know you were immediately like, Oh, it's not available anywhere. Ben's going to pirate it. Nope. I spent my hard earned money to watch this movie. Uh, and it was I worth twenty it. bucks for it. I was gonna say I I did buy it as well. Uh, I don't normally buy movies, but I did buy this one. I did not buy it for the expectation that, much yeah. like every movie, it will hit streaming oh, services yeah. at some point, and I will rewatch it then. What's funny is like literally until like a couple days prior to when we were gonna like watch it, you could not rent it. Like it only became available for rental like at the beginning of July. Yeah, and my issue is is that you know. It'll leave streaming services sometime, and then I'll want to watch it. That one time, it's not on streaming services, so. <laughs> eh. With most movies, I don't agree, but with this with, with this one, I'll be like, eh, I might just want to watch it. Some, but most of the time, I'm fine with, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, Game Pass. You know, like, most of the time, I'm like, if it's on there, I'll play it. If not, whatever. I guess. I don't know. I, I'm definitely somebody who gets in the mood for a certain movie, and mm. I'm like, I want to watch this now. And if it's not available, I'm like, shit, well, time to get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, for me, it has to be, like, a particular movie. I would, like, a particular thing. Like, not to, like, I don't know. But I'm also not as... Well, that's, I know, yeah, but... That's what I mean. Like, I, I gotta be like, you know what? I really want to watch, like, Star Wars right now. And then I... Well, yeah. You go but, do it. But, but it's not... Yeah. I mean, I'm not like... You know what? I'm thinking a movie that's it's a little funny, but it's yeah. a little zany. <laughs> like, it's a little, like I, yeah. it is like a very particular. Yeah, just like, like the picture of Dylan watch. sitting in this fucking <laughs> giant like wingback chair, <laughs> like a fucking like a little cup of tea and his legs crossed. You know, I'm looking for a movie. Talk. He you in my in my head. You sound like uh, what was the Martin Short character Jiminy Glick. <laughs> From what? For a movie. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I do like that the uh, on Letterboxd, if you've seen everywhere, uh, everything everywhere all at once, the watched button is a googly eye. Oh yeah, I do. I ha I do. Uh, I remember that from when it came out. Uh, much like Ben, I didn't necessarily know what to expect. I mean, I had seen the trailer. Um, when this was announced and I so wanted to see this movie, I mean, I'll pretty much see anything a 24 puts out at this point, but I, I was really wanting to watch this. And then everyone who had seen it in theaters was like, Dylan, you're going to love this thing. <laughs> and it, I mean, sometimes I get a little worried by that. Cause then I like pump up my expectations really high and it's not always as good as I think it's going to be. But for this one, this movie definitely met my expectations and then some, um, you know, it's, uh, it's an experience much like, you know, some of the other movies that you guys didn't necessarily like, you know, like house or, or some of these other movies. I, I think this one is definitely one of those experience movies. It's wild. It's out there. 
And most importantly, it has so much heart that really makes the movie worth the almost two and a half hour runtime. Keeps you guessing. The humor is funny. And uh, I don't know. I, I love it. I think it's it's uh, it's definitely going on one of my favorites lists. Um, definitely probably the best movie I've seen this year so far that's released this year. Um, Batman's up there, but I think this is probably better in my opinion. Um, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'll be interested to see, like I asked you, Cam, how it holds up on a rewatch for me. Um, but as of now, like first viewing, I, I it uh, way exceeded my expectations. This movie is an experience, but unlike House, I enjoyed it and I wanted to finish it. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> hey, I waited until you were done politely to, to throw that comment in. <laughs> <laughs> Good old House. Yeah, so I love this movie a lot. I think this is definitely the best movie that I've seen this year. It's probably the best movie I've seen, like, I I don't know. It's probably one of my top three favorite movies that I've seen. I mean, maybe it's recency bias, but, like, I don't know. I think that this movie is fantastic. It's got a lot of, like, pretty much everything you could want. It's silly. It's... It's got action in it. It's intense. But then at the core of it all, it's also, like I said, on a, on a, on a, even on another watch, you get, you know, the, the underlying, not even underlying, but you get the themes of it. You get the, the real story of the family dynamics um, and, like, the purpose of life and, like, personal relationships and all of this good stuff in there. And it's so moving, in my opinion, uh, that even on multiple watches, unlike some other movies like comedies or even action movies where uh, it kind of dulls out when you watch it multiple times because, you know, you know what's going to happen. Um, I think I don't think you get that uh, dulling as much here. So uh, when I saw it the first time, I gave it a 10 out of 10, and I'm going to leave it at 10 out of 10. I think it's awesome. It's one of the best movies I've seen. Is this the first 10 out of 10 from Cam? On the podcast? Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. Wow! <laughs> it's just, it's so good. It's so good. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, at Cocktails and Classics Pod. Let us know what you thought of everything everywhere all at once. Head up the Drizzly and Casker links below to get yourself your, uh, like, seven liquors or whatever it was to uh, make yourself a Long Island iced tea. Uh, leave a review wherever you listen, Apple or Spotify, Google, uh, helps us out and, uh, check us out next week. Share us with your friends and family. And as always watch responsibly.